Welcome all YouTube viewers. It's been a while since I've done a video like this, so stay with me, but things will be interesting. So, quite a few years back, I had made a video taking an Xbox One disc tray and putting it inside of an Xbox 360, testing out how it worked, try to see if it would be able to play games, movies, etc. Just see if it would be a good replacement to take an Xbox One disc, disc tray, seeing as how it is newer, and putting it inside an older console to see if there would be any more benefits to it. Sadly, there was not. So a quick recap on that was basically it played DVD movies, but it would try to register a game as a regular DVD and wouldn't play it. It would just get stuck on the title Xbox theme screen. It would not play a DVD movie, and it would not register an Xbox One game at all, because I thought maybe because it was a Blu-ray player, maybe we could trick it into at least playing a Blu-ray movie, but sadly, it did not. But anyway, on that video, I had recently just gotten a comment saying, Hey, why not take an Xbox 360 disc tray, put it, in Xbox, put it inside an Xbox One now? And I had thought about that, but it has been such a long time that I kind of forgot about the idea. Because at the time that I made that video previously, the Xbox One I was using said disc tray was out of commission. So finally, now that I have the resources to be able to do something like that, I am going to be taking an Xbox 360, and I'm going to strip it apart, take its disc tray out, and I'm going to be placing that disc tray inside with a malfunctioning Xbox One. So we're going to stick to the OG for this one. And we're going to use the same console that I, basically the same consoles I had used before. These ones are different consoles than what I had had in the video before, but it's still the same Xbox One and an Xbox 360S. So. We're just going to reverse what we did in my last video. So, stick around, we're going to see how that goes. I'm going to get all of these apart down to basically the bare minimum of what we need to do to be able to get to the disc trays. And I'm just going to swap them out. So, we're going to see together what that does. Alrighty, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show that the disc tray in this set console does work properly. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to show you that it's tested and everything works. So we have this, I have a little bitty monitor screen over here, and I have a controller. And if anybody asks, I bought this little screen on Amazon, and I think its highest resolution is only like 480p, but it does actually work pretty good. It does not work on consoles that try to generate a 4K image. Otherwise, it just kind of all glitches out, but it does work good. There will be no audio coming from this, though, sadly. So, first, we're going to open up this disc tray. So, it still opens up. It is still fine. And I'm going to grab a disc, and I'm going to put it in there and show you that it does play. So, wouldn't you know it, I still have Fallout New Vegas from the original video that I made almost five years ago. So, we're going to put this right in here. We're going to go ahead and let that take it in. And then we're going to see that it reads and still plays it. And there, it's going ahead and it's playing the game. This sounds slightly rough, but I... But it is working. I will say, even for myself, I mean, it probably doesn't show up that great on the camera, but that screen does come up pretty fairly nice. Like, if I had audio coming out elsewhere, then it would be great. But I don't, you, there is no aux port on the side. So. But yeah, we are loaded up to our menu now. Oh. 
So, I mean, that should be enough to prove to you that the disc tray is working all right. So, we're going to end this, and then I'm going to plug in the Xbox One and show you that that one is working just as well, real quick, first. Alrighty, so here we are. I now have the Xbox One plugged in, and it should be ready to go. It has been a little while since I turned this console on, so I may need to do some setting up. If I do, then I'll just cut the video and I'll be right back with it. Okay, so it took a slightly long time to turn on, but it does work. Okay, so everything looks like it's good to go. I'm going to go ahead and pop in a disc into this really quick, just to make sure that I mean, I'm not using this disc tray, but I might as well just test it really quick. So I will be right back. Alrighty, so it looks like I already have Minecraft installed on this, so I'm just going to go ahead and just pop in this disc. That way I don't have to wait for an install screen. Alright, so it's already automatically playing. Good old OG Minecraft. Sure do miss that version of it. Alrighty, so... Looks like it's all working fine. Let's go ahead and pop this disc out. It looks like it's working pretty flawless. So I'm going to go ahead and start tearing these apart. And once we get down to the disc trays, then we're going to work our magic. So this isn't going to be a full teardown video. So if you're looking for a teardown video, this is not going to be the one you're looking for. But I figured I might as well let you guys join in with getting this down just to the essential parts that we need, the disc tray. So we're going to take our 360 here, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this top vent right here. So I'm going to take this little pry tool, and usually just getting it started like that will usually help. So... Would have helped if I got another pry tool, but I'm just going to go ahead and start pulling this up. And there, there we are. And that's all there is to that. And now we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the same thing, except different. We got the hard drive cover right here we can just pull off, and this one's just really easy. Just pull up with our fingers a little bit, and it's that simple. Alrighty, I just went ahead and gave us a little bit of light, so hopefully it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. But I've got a little thin, small screwdriver just so I can use as a small prying tool. So now that we got the vents off, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull some clips off just by kind of going in there and prying them out. And we got that part started. We can go to the center. And then now back. All right, so now that's out. We're going to flip to the other side again. And we're going to go ahead and do the same. I'm going to start with the front. All right, so I had a few more issues trying to get this side started more than I wanted to, but I do believe I've got it now. So all I, got, all I have to do is just get to the last two clips on this side. Alrighty, so I did finally get this side off. Took a little longer than I wanted it to, so I just, I'm going to clip that out. Um, so yeah, we have that off now. And then all I got to do is open up a couple clips in the back here. And now we have the moment that we have been waiting for. Our disk drive. So, 
this isn't going to be hard to remove it. All, all we have to do is just pull it up a little bit. And we have two cords right here. Let me take this off really quick. Pry that off. And then very gently pull that off. So now we have our disk drive. So now all I have to do is go ahead and take apart the Xbox One now. And we're going to try putting this inside of that. So let's go ahead and do that and start working on our Xbox One. And now we have our Xbox One and we're going to go ahead and start taking that apart. So first part that we're going to start with is the vent that's up on the top here. So about the same as the Xbox 360. This one's actually a little easier to take out. And there we have that. So in order to start getting to all the other parts, we have to slowly go across the back because we can't do that over here like we can on the other side. So now I have the back clips taken apart. I'm just gonna flip this around. And now all I gotta do is just very gently as in gently try not to break it. Lift it forward. There's a little ribbon cable right here that I could just go ahead and probably a little easier if I go ahead and use this guy. So go ahead and loosen that and then I can go ahead and loosen up the clip. All right, and there we have that. There is that is all there is to the top cover. All right, so now all I have next is all I gotta do is just move the speaker over. I gotta take out, I believe this is the Wi-Fi card, and it might be the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I am not actually one hundred percent sure on that one, but I just gotta take out that screw. It is actually missing one. Interesting. I might have to get a replacement. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Pull that right up out of there. And we have another screw. It is missing all of its screws. Huh. That is interesting. Well, I have another Xbox One I can take parts out of, and I'm going to replace all of those. I will actually be doing that very soon, otherwise I will forget about this. I was caught off guard. Because I did not take any of those screws out. So what happens when you buy from pawn shops. Alrighty, so... Here we have it, we are down to our disc tray. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to pull these cables out just like we did in the Xbox 360. And then we can lift up on that. So we're not gonna be using this for the video, so I can just go ahead and put that to our side. So now I'm gonna plug this back in the way it is I suppose I could go ahead and do this at least. I mean, I won't really be needing that except for the controller. So let's go ahead and do that. Alrighty, so here is our disc tray again for the 360. And we're going to go ahead and try to place this in here. So one thing I did notice already is it doesn't quite fit very well between these two sides. So. It's going to be a little bit of a wiggle and shove, but we can kind of get it in there if we go past this edge. So, if we go ahead, try to, I want to try to push it down a little bit more, just to try to flatten it out, which might prove to be slightly difficult. 
so it's a good thing I chose the Xbox One and nothing like the One S or something because then it would have been a really tight squeeze. So, I mean, I'd like to get it to be a little better than that. Maybe, okay, that looks, that looks okay. So let's see if I can plug this in now. And there we are, we are now plugged in to our Xbox One with our 360 tray. So, it's like it's still a little lopsided yet. All right, there we go, that looks a little better. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to plug this in. Okay. So, I still have I still gotta put the top cover on so I can connect the cable over here to this, so I'll be back in one second. Alrighty, so now I have this on. I got that plugged in to... Oh, I did have it plugged in. Okay, so I have that plugged in, and I still have the 360 disc tray in there. It's a pretty tight squeeze. It kind of fits, but it's still a little thick. So... The controller should still turn it on. All right, let's go ahead and try this. Okay, we have a light. Haven't heard anything from the disc tray yet. I don't hear any sounds. I'm curious how this one's gonna play out, because like in the first video when the disc tray was making noises. It would act like it was trying to spit out a tray. I don't know if that's gonna do the same thing on here. So, not even seeing an option. I don't even think I can eject a disc if there's nothing in it. So, I am going to have to plug the faceplate into it so that way I can touch the eject button to see if it'll open the tray. So, one more second. Okay, so I plugged in this, and this tr made a... Okay, you can hear it's making some type of noise. The screen just went dark. Hmm. Try this again. I don't know if it did that because a button got pressed. So we're still on. What happens if we press? Hmm. So it just turns off. It doesn't turn off all the way though, it just goes into like its rest mode or sleep. So it doesn't even want to. There's gotta be something we can do to try to get it to open. So if we just press eject. Okay, it made a motion. Okay, so there's only one thing I can think of to actually force it open. I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt to put a little needle in the side to manually eject the drive itself. I'm gonna see if it'll take it in on its own and see if it'll try to process reading a disc. So again, I will be right back. Okay, so I believe the metal may have been trying to actually hold on to this. So I'm gonna try it one more time when it's a little more loose. Oh, okay, it was just that simple. It actually opened up normally. That's 
All right, so the first part was actually entirely my fault. So the first thing I'm going to try doing is, because it is only a DVD player, I'm going to put in a DVD first, just to even see if it works at all. So I'm going to grab that, I'm going to place that on here, and then let's see what we can do. All right, so I have my DVD, I have Hellboy ready to play, so I'm just going to place that on there. I'm going to go ahead and just touch the eject button again. so it doesn't do anything. I'm going to go ahead and push it in. Nothing. Of course, it, I probably should in the speaker just to see if it's actually registering the touches. Turning it on, I'll try to spin up the tray. It's not wanting to open it either. Let's see what happens when we go over to settings for the disk drive. Okay, so it is set to play automatically. So, it's not really wanting to spin it up at all. Go ahead. I'm just going to do a hard shutdown. And maybe it'll think differently trying to search and see if there's something in the disk tray when I turn it back on from a cold start. So this will be just a moment. It's still interesting if, I don't know if you need an eye to be able to decode Blu-ray, or if it's the software in the motherboard. I never really did my research on that, so maybe it's possible. There's nothing showing up. Turn the controller on. Okay, so it's playing something. I mean, it's I can definitely hear it spinning in there, so let's Very smooth yet, so. So this kind of console is used to something being shoved in it and then taking it in, but there's no sensor for it to acknowledge that the disc is going in at all. So. Doesn't even try to latch it shut. It's just kind of. It does not seem like it's reading it at all. So, sadly, I'm gonna say this is probably all it's gonna do. It's just absolutely nothing. So, I'm gonna see if I can try something else and then I will let you know. Okay, so I did wait a second to turn it on. It's already trying to read a disc, so I think I was right on that. You can kind of hear it spinning a little bit. 
So maybe this time it'll actually show that there's something in there. Okay, so it turns out I don't actually need that wire connecting for the controller. So I didn't need the top plate on at all. So I'm just going to do this one more time without the top tray on. I mean, it's spun up again. It's. I could try putting in a game just to see if it does something before I cut this short. So, yeah, there's still no DVD showing up on the screen. So, I'm going to open this up. Of course, I unplugged that speaker again. But either way, we did open. So. I'm going to go ahead and put a game in it real quick. But I do have Fallout in it right now. We'll see if it shows up. It does not. So absolutely nothing is coming up with this. Absolutely nothing. So just for the sake of video and for the sake of questions, I am going to once more do a cold shutdown and I will put Minecraft in it again just to see if it'll play Blu-ray. So because it's Xbox One, maybe it'll register Xbox One. I don't know. But just for the sake of content, I suppose. So I'm going to turn this off and I'll be right back again. Okay, so the fan's off, everything stopped moving, so we're going to go ahead and turn it on again. This doesn't seem like the controller turned it on. Okay, so it's once again trying to read. I mean, it tries to read the disc, it doesn't settle down at all, it just keeps spinning it, but it barely sounds like it's trying to read it. Because I would think I would hear the motor for the eye going back and forth, but it's not. So I'm going to have to do another cold start just for it to register that there's a game in there. So off to settings once again. And we're going to shut down. So we got Minecraft in there. So. Let's see what it does this time. Okay, there it tried to read it, but it's not spinning. Doesn't sound like it is anyway. So, nothing. Minecraft moved over, that's interesting. So it really does not want to do anything with that disc tray. Because yeah, you can tell it's like, it's not, no vibrations or nothing. It's not even spinning it at this point. I knew a disc was still in there though. Just absolutely fails to read this disc. Alrighty. So as I'm pretty sure I mentioned earlier, um, I'm getting this all put back together. I really don't know why they were like that. I had bought this Xbox from a pawn shop, I want to say maybe six months ago. I paid like $200 for this. 
and until today I had no idea that all the screws that held the top cover on that hold, basically holds everything together were missing which is quite ridiculous in my opinion yes I don't expect people at the pawn shop to take it apart and do all that stuff they just test it and said okay it works let's sell it but whoever sold this to that pawn shop come on I got nothing for you but anyway I have this donor Xbox that's pretty much almost parts anyway it doesn't really work that well so I'm just taking I'm just gonna turn this straight into a parts console so I took all the screws out of the top cover for this and put on the housing of this console so I'm gonna give Mr. Villager, the guy that gave me the recommendation to do this video, I'm gonna thank you personally for getting me to take this apart to actually notice that. Because it would have been probably months, if not a year or more, before I ever got around to taking this console apart without ever knowing that all those screws were missing. So, in the long run, you probably saved my console from going to shit <laughs> so thanks well unfortunately the video did not go how even I exactly planned so hopefully the video wasn't a complete loss to you hopefully it was somewhat entertaining to learn something like this that don't work but uh, I guess a video is a video and this is the end of this type of episode. I mean, if there's anything else you guys would like to see, go ahead and recommend it. Nothing hurts to shoot something at me that you might hear. I have all kinds of different consoles. If you want something tried on one with another or whatever your taste desires, go ahead and shoot me an idea. Because I would be down for whatever. Pass the time. Make some interesting content. I wouldn't mind getting back into doing something like this a little more often. So, thank you again, Mr. Villager, for the video idea, reminding me about something that I used to like doing and would like to definitely get back into doing again. And for uh, giving me the opportunity to realize that my console was definitely missing some screws. <laughs> so, well, I guess that does it for this video. If you liked it, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe and give me some ideas if you can. So, you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and peace out.